So guys, in today's video, I will be doing for you a roundup of my trip to Milan this year where I went for Exxon's 2022. And if you want to find out which fragrances I smell there and uh, all the samples and the perfumes I took home, make sure to keep on watching. But before we get started, I would like to ask those of you who are here for the first time to subscribe to my channel. And of course, please give this video a huge thumbs up if you appreciate me going out and actually traveling around the world, smelling new fragrances, and then coming back and updating you guys about them. And uh, once you're done with that, we can dive right into this pretty long video that I can promise you. Hello and welcome back you guys. I'm actually back from Milan where I've been for Exxon's 2022. This is probably the biggest perfume exhibition of niche fragrances and for the last couple of years actually 2020 and 2021 it was um, cancelled due to COVID, but I am so, so excited that this year it took place and everyone was so excited to be there and I guess this year's exhibition was the biggest one out of all of them and fourth in my life. It um, was at a new place and there were so many people. I personally was really excited, first of all, to smell perfumes. This is what I love the most in my life, experience new fragrances, find out about new brands and of course also to see my colleagues friends, people from the perfume industry, so I will be showing you the pictures while I'm running you through all these fragrances and believe me, uh, there are so many of them, so without any further ado, uh, let's get started and I will just tell you that the first day at the exhibition, there were four in total, but the first was the less productive for me just because I need to be honest with you. Since we haven't seen each other for such a long time, I just wanted to say hello to everyone I knew and then one led uh, into another and it just took so much time at every booth because we were chatting, not even necessarily smelling perfumes. And so right at the entrance I saw Tiziana Terenzi. They launched a lot of fragrances for the Quinto Canto range and everything was so colorful. I really loved that vibe. They had a few new launches for the Terenzi line. Unfortunately, I have no sample to share with you but hopefully that will arrive soon so I can film a dedicated video to that but the next thing I saw was Musk Milano and they have a few brands now so one of them is the new Milano Fragrance which is dedicated to the home city Milano and uh, I really like the packaging for this brand because the bottles are blue and that's just like a very cool look and they also have really nice caps which are magnetic so let me actually spray this one which is called Basilica that I liked a lot probably because of the name because um, I was fooled by it. there is no Basilicum in there but Rosemary they are quite different though and I have a feeling uh, basil is sort of like a trendy note at the moment but probably basilica means something different I just got that association with basil because uh, they just have similar um, it's a similar word but anyway there is rosemary in there and there is also something like thyme so it is very relaxing and peaceful in the opening there is also a bit of incense with milk which makes it very not meditative but just like cozy and uh, thanks to the woody base, it's just a very grounding fragrance. So that was a standout from this line for me, but I got some samples, so let me know in the comments if you would be interested in like a collection overview of Milano Fragrance fragrances. But we are moving on and next thing I want to show you, by the way, I have so many bottles here, I will definitely need a minute to find a perfect one. And actually I asked you if you would be interested in seeing this video as a live stream, so like a live roundup, but I have already shared with you a live stream of Exxon, so just in case you would like to see behind the scenes and really see 
all the people behind the brands, I would definitely recommend you check out that video. It turned out to be long because you could see me stopping by at uh, a lot of booths and just like chatting with people. But I feel like that made it a bit more realistic and uh, even relaxed, uh, you know, chatty and um, naturally casual. But uh, yeah, here I have perfume from the new brand for me. I loved discovering Soul Couture. It is called um, Gender Ginger. And I really liked it actually at the Exxon's party, Amino Emanuela from Must Milano brand was wearing it and she sprayed a bit on me and I really loved that because we walked home with Benny quite a few kilometers and my feet were like literally crying, dying, hurting so much because I've been walking so many rounds at songs and then after that and then to the party and then home. Oh my god, it was such an exhausting night but that fragrance kept me alive because it is really fun, like amber, ginger, it is not too bitter, it is not too sour. I really liked its happy mood and I would definitely recommend you to look into it if you appreciate gingery perfumes because I know it can be a struggle to find a nice one. And I really like how fun it is. It is really juicy without anything that would be disturbing. So this is just a very nice, sunny and even summery perfume. But let's move on to another brand that uh, I was really happy to see again, which is Nishane. This is like a top brand that launched a very beautiful capsule collection that I'm planning on reviewing really soon. And it consists out of four fragrances. They're all very, very nice and very different. There is a smoky fragrance, a bit more floral one, an oody perfume, and also like a fougere. So stay tuned for that review, but I just wanted to show you how this gorgeous design looks. And Nishani did something amazing with their fragrance Mana. It is uh, probably also new, not as new as this uh, Time Capsule collection, but I can tell you that for me this is probably the best animalic um, find of the entire um, exhibition. Mana is sort of like an oud fragrance mixed with my all-time favorite animalic fragrance by Nishani. Actually, it's also from this brand. It's funny that I have so many favorites from them and you might remember my love to Africa Oliphant. By the way, the lighting is changing. That's because I'm filming in this place and that's because I still haven't managed to get all these samples and perfumes I brought home to my studio upstairs so let me know if you like how this picture looks and if you do I will film more videos right here but let's get back to Mana. It is animalic, it is very woody uh, and um, there is Castorium with lots of woody notes with spices and it just smells really intense and powerful so just in case you love um, such animalic and powerful scents, I think you will really enjoy it. But I was also really excited to find a brand that focuses on my most favorite note, which happens to be vanilla, as you might remember. I adore it. And I was so excited to find out that there is a brand that creates vanillic perfumes, and it is called the Maison de la Vanille. So, Literally, I got so happy at their booth and this is one of Vanilla's superpowers. It just makes people feel happy and I received this very nice set of vanilla fragrances and also a few samples that look so pretty. I love these designs. They are so, so nice. Different vanilla fragrances right here and also their newest one that I really want to spray on me. I've already worn it to work and got compliments for Vanille Flamboyant du Bourbon and of course you will receive a lot of compliments because vanilla has this power of attraction. This is like a sour, floral, very beautiful, easygoing vanilla that I think a lot of people will enjoy. So I was really happy to discover it. And I was also really happy to discover the brand is called Moresque because their bottles are pieces of art. And I got like a whole bunch of samples that are right here. And I'm planning on just filming a separate video on them because look at how many samples. I haven't smelled 
all of them yet, but I'm looking forward to. However, I've already unboxed their newest release and this is a Scarlet Rouge. And just let me open this box for you because inside is a wonderful bottle. And as you know, I really love red color and just look at it. It's so gorgeous. By the way, Moraska Blend Oud and House of Oud, they were presented at the bar, you know, like uh, where you could sip on a cocktail, letting you um, being introduced to these stunning uh, brands and they are all awesome. This is from the Secret Collection. Scarlet Roche is a very, very essential perfume, believe me. I promise you a lot of positive uh, reaction if you wear it, at least that's what I got and I really love that. It's creamy, it is a little bit powdery, uh, slightly fresh, floral, very, very beautiful fragrance that's just like super well blended and I was really happy to discover it as well as a lot of the new House of Oods that I'm missing in my collection because you might remember I have a few of them sitting upstairs. They've just released uh, this one that is called Blue Sapphire and um, I don't have like this uh, egg bottle but um, this travel spray which is just fine so I, I'm actually spraying everything on me to be reminded of these great fragrances plus I'm going to the festival afterwards so I really want to smell a very very beautiful mass appealing and gorgeous. Blue Step Fire is a very juicy fragrance, mm, it smells summery, it smells fruity, it smells very very fun, things got not aquatic because when I see a blue bottle I associate it with something marine but this is a very fruity fragrance and I really like it for that. So the House of Oud has actually quite a few new fragrances like a rainbow one and what about the pop with the note of, guess where I've been yesterday, popcorn at the cinema. So that's actually a great one and I really want to add it to my collection but Blue Sapphire also has um, uh, one that is uh, like um, green, gr green fragrance. Mm, which is a part of this collection but yeah this is just like a very fruity very uh, juicy lovely fragrance although there are not many fruity notes in there listen I smell almost like a summer like fruit salad in there but with that being said let's move on to another fruity fragrance and at the moment I'm really into fruity perfumes especially with a note of black currant which I'm thinking will be the star of the next passive episode let me know how you like that idea but let me actually show you a great fruity fragrance with a note of black currant that you will definitely find in that upcoming episode which is a new release by the brand Kajal and let me just show you this amazing blotter which is so much fun but uh, I guess this is the most beautiful bottle I found at Exxon's because Almas is a true treasure that I brought home just check out how gorgeous it is I can't get over it especially the cap oh my goodness it was really really uh, cool to discover. There is a new launch that smells more masculine, but I loved um, Almaz much more because in here we have raspberry and black currant. They are very, very powdery, I guess maybe because of the Oris Heliotrope, but there are some juicy citruses that keep them alive and not as, you know, like maybe um, heavy as sometimes fragrances that are powdery can smell. And um, I was reminded just a little bit of um, this perfume that so many people love, Herba Pura by Xerjov, that you guys know I'm not the biggest fan of, but I prefer Kajai's Almas so much more because, you know, it, it doesn't have this heavy note to it. But with that being said, let's move on to the brand that I was really happy to see again because I discovered for myself last time I was at Exxon's and I'm talking about uh, Hardin de Parfums, probably I'm mispronouncing its name. I know that Hardin is a garden and they have a really lovely set that um, I got for a review and Benny has already sprayed himself with one of these fragrances and got this incredible sillage so their fragrances are just very very beautiful and I like them for that a lot I want to show you a bottle of uh, their brand Unique You uh, though because um, Perfect Amber really stood out to me because this is like a gorgeous 
boozy, but not, you know, too intense ambery fragrance. Oh yes, with honey, with almost like a tobacco boost. Uh, it's not uh, very dark as fragrances in the style can be, so I highly appreciate it for that and uh, I'm looking forward to tell you more about it um, in the future videos. But uh, right now I want to show you the fragrance by the brand Unui Nomad from which I received uh, this perfume, Memory Motel, that was my favorite fragrance discovery of April, if I'm not wrong. You might remember that video because the fragrance is so, so interesting and a little bit nostalgic. They've just released this one, Click Song, and I was just really amazed by its bold sillage because uh, this is a patchouli dominant fragrance with a beautiful oriental dry down. It is slightly powdery. It smells like you're going out. It's uh, maybe a bit colder outside and you just um, have this incredible warm sillage around you. So that's about Click Song. I was also really happy to smell some of their other fragrances. They have these cute samples and very nice designs as well as the perfume Rose America that, as I've understood, is available only on their website, which was pretty cool. And I got this travel spray, so I'm very grateful for that because I'm sort of like in rose perfumes at the moment and my mom turned me on the roses because she's like a big fan. She's growing roses in her garden. And this is a very nice, elegant, polished, gorgeous rose. You know, it's not too much, it's, uh, it's not too little, it is just amazing. But speaking about, you know, all the gardens and florals, I was absolutely in love with a certain brand that uh, isn't like the inspiration for them comes from different gardens all over the world and it is called Le Jardin Retrovo. You guys, first of all, I have a bottle of their rose fragrance somewhere. Here it is. And their designs are so cute. Let me find the samples and I will show them you really quick. So I love, love, love their designs. This is the rose and we have a couple more that I will be definitely reviewing for you in another video because I literally loved all of their fragrances. Their booth was amazing. They were like birds singing. I have already uh, reported from that place and there is a video on my channel which you can watch for that but you guys not only it was a pleasure to discover new brands it was really nice to see you know people that you know even if only from internet you know like because during pandemic i decided to interview perfumers and just like stay in touch with them and so i did with lovely Bella from the British Niche House Ilk Perfumes and uh, you might remember our very cool chat on Instagram and I have a couple of her fragrances actually that was the brand discovery of 2020 for me if I'm not mixing up the names uh, and the day uh, the, the years but she has just recently launched two new limited fragrances and they are sort of like about the relationship of human and nature in the context of big cities and there are two perfumes there is human that looks like this and there is nature by the way i always say that her website and just you know like the designs are so cool so that's for i would definitely recommend you to visit her official website and the instagram page so there are actually the seeds that you can plant, uh, plant, which is amazing. Maybe I will give that to my mom. And this is a stunning bottle that I really wanted to add to my collection because this is a collector piece. It is so, so stunning. And the fragrance is amazing too. As you can see, there are seeds inside and it's just so gorgeous. So the two perfumes are quite different. This one has like this very natural skin scent, you know, like you've just came out of the shower, haven't applied anything on you, and then after a while you just started smelling yourself, but like in a clean, beautiful way. So I really like human. I haven't opened the nature yet, but um, I will definitely review them for you because this was like a standout uh, release for me that, um, I got um, acquainted during songs and um, I had a very great lunch with Bella and a lot of uh, fun time and laughs and I hope that next time we'll meet uh, somewhere in London. 
But with that being said, let's move on to the brand that I discovered for myself, not by accident, but just like unexpectedly, but really love their collection. And I'm talking about uh, Marcy perfume. So these are the bottles. They look really cool. Uh, I wanted to show you the design. So they are black and then you have a pop of color. Actually, speaking about pop of color, my makeup uh, got a bit of, um, you know, like out of control today, but I don't mind. So the green one is actually London Fields and I like it a lot because um, it's almost like frankincense, but like in a powdery way, very, 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 very relaxing, mm, grounding, and at the same time uplifting. It's it's gorgeous. I really like the London Fields. Uh, it took me by surprise because normally I'm not into green perfumes, and it's not necessarily very green. It is very powdery. I know there is cucumber and cherry, a lot of different fruity and floral notes. So it is it is clean and amazingly like powdery beautiful but i love the story of a naked rose because apparently this is a rose perfume without any rose in there and um, that definitely sounds intriguing so the sprayers on these are very cool and i don't necessarily smell like a you know like this uh, very realistic rose in there but there is something going on that might remind you of the rose that might be rose once but is not anymore so that's definitely one of the new brands i love to discover and i have a whole bunch of their samples in this very cool uh, leather bag right here that are also colorful and that i might review for you in the future if you like that so if uh, there were any brands that you want me to continue exploring and updating you about please let me know but the brand that I love to explore uh, myself, I've discovered it a couple of years ago, but this time I had time and opportunity to talk to their president and even interview him, so that video is already up. You might want to check out my interview with the president of Durand Paris Perfumes, historical brand that produced different cosmetic products and even perfumery for Marie Antoinette. Their fragrances are powdery, luxurious, elegant. When my mom heard the story and saw these bottles, she wanted to keep them, but no, 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 they are staying in my collection. So beautiful. This one, Classic, was inspired by the formula that is like hundred of years old and it is powdery and gorgeous, so opulent, like really opulent. Oh my God, it is green and powdery and floral and fresh and deep and just perfect. So I really love that, but I also enjoyed this one uh, that is called Versailles 1780 because there is a note of a lipstick in there and uh, I'm working on a lipstick video. So let me know if you like that idea. For that, I also got this beautiful pink fragrance livery voice by Jacques Fath. And speaking about Jacques Fath, um, I actually want to share with you something that I think is a little bit of a trend or just I've seen a couple of fragrances with a note of vetiver. That's why I think that this might be like a bit of a trend at the moment. So first of all, Jacques Fath has just released um, a fragrance that is called, maybe I will find it, but I don't think so because there's a lot going on right here. It's um, their Vetiva Gris. So they have this perfume that is um, Iris Green um, that was created by amazing uh, perfumer who created a cycle 001 for Maison Violet, which is one of my most favorite fragrances. And um, they've just created uh, the Vetiva Gris that I can't find a sample of, and that bugs me a little bit, to be honest with you. Here it is, thanks God. So Vetiva Gris is not necessarily uh, a typical Vetiva, and as you might remember, it's not my favorite note because it smells just a bit too masculine for me, to be honest with you. And this is like a fresh, green, rooty vetiver that 
is wearable even for me, so that was quite nice. But uh, let's stay on the vetiver um, track. The brand uh, Lochester Perfumer with very cool concept that fragrances are inspired by different songs or the compositions were created from perfumes, don't remember that exactly, but I could listen to them and smell perfumes, that was a nice experience. They released uh, this perfume, Vetiva Overdose, and that's more like a traditional vetiver. It, 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 is, it is quite um, citrusy and not as smoky as some vetivers can be. But my favorite vetiver launch was from Santi Borgas and his perfume um, Verdant Delir um, Deliri. Ooh, I'm sorry, I couldn't get the name right away. But I got the fragrance right away. It smells clean like a soap, but not in the aldehydic way, which is quite unique in my personal opinion. Uh, there are a lot of aromatic notes, as I remember there's probably yuzu or something and oregano, which I stand behind. I love this note in cuisine, I love it in perfumery, the aroma of it is unbeatable and I love how it smells like soap, but not aldehydic soap, you know what I'm talking about? So this is absolutely fantastic, one of my most favorite releases for sure, like uh, definitely in the top. The, but there was like a very beautiful fragrance Avant at Après by Isabelle that smelled, um, you know, like tropical and floral. There is this Manoi oil um, and just like luscious flowers that you can smell. They're very easy going, not too much. I really like its very um, chilly energy, if you know what I'm talking about. So that was definitely a nice discovery for me. But I fell in love with this next brand, which is among top favorite brands discoveries for me. And it's from Japan. They had a lot of fans there. And when anyone asked which brand I loved, I sent people to... J scent and literally every single fragrance I loved and I hope I will receive some samples so I can do like a collection overview for you but roasted green tea was among my biggest favorites from J scent and uh, that's because you know I am a huge tea lover and this one smells of roasted tea because oh my god in the opening this is the most amazing opening ever because there there were like almost like nuts in there and it's roasted but then in the dry down it turns like almost into the matcha absolutely amazing you know like with a bit of mint with a hint of coconut a beautiful fragrance from a very cool brand they were really well received and i love discovering them and really hope that um, soon I will get a few of their samples. But another brand that I absolutely love to discover was from Paris. It is called Benet Papillon Paris. And I have a two of their fragrances. One is, of course, a rosy, number seven, which is a gorgeous rose like um, no other. It has a bit of yuzu, it has a hint of spice. And this number seven is so, so good. Even for men who is looking for like a rose fragrance, I would definitely recommend with a very nice design. I find that this brand is very, very nice and their sprayers are cool too, but uh, there were more fragrances I loved from them. For example, number 12 uh, that I have in a bigger bottle because uh, this is a fruit explosion. There are not many fruity notes, but for me it smells very invigorating and I loved uh, that a lot about it. There is like the note that reminds me of something very fizzy and I really like that vibe and also I got a few samples, so stay tuned for my review on this brand, which was also among my top uh, favorite discoveries as far as the brands go. And I want to quickly mention another one that I got a pleasure to experience, which is uh, a step abroad from Milan. And when I show you these bottles, you will think it's insane but it is so cool. Aha! This is like, uh, you know, a sprayer that he would use to, um, you know, paint on graffiti, but these are perfumes for hair and body, so let's spray a bit on my hair. Ah, this is so cool! And this fragrance is amazing, Sunday Street. 
because it's like a fresh, very fun, a little bit spicy gourmand that will keep you happy all day. But I have something a bit different, which is called um, Transition Gate, and uh, there are more, you know, like um, leathery and smoky nuances that are mixed with some herbs. I will spray them on my legs because these are perfumes for the hair and body and we had so much fun at their booth it was amazing you know like to have fun with perfumes i really like fun fragrances the booth in front of them was bella rebel and uh, these fragrances are like badass they are so cool the brand has nice concept and I fell in love with the entire collection, but brought home only two, the Bubblegum and Stunned, and a whole sample collection, which I will update you on in another video. But talking about brands that I really loved or wanted to experience, I need to mention Boho Boko Perfume, which is one of a few Polish niche brands, which is exciting on its own, and I've discovered for myself on my Hamburg trip and a lot of the fragrances that I tested from them in Douglas and just recently they launched two new releases and those were the wet um, cherry and liquor and wild carrot wood and you guys they are great uh, this uh, wild carrot wood is a very powerful wood some people online are not the fan i don't agree it's a very solid animalic smoky wood and wet cherry liquor is a bit more fun and sexy and you know like the stories behind the fragrance is also very nice so i would definitely I uh, recommend you to look into them because Boho Boko was also very well received among the audience and uh, I like that. I like that a lot. But um, I also really liked um, to discover this brand from Sicily and uh, it is called Via de Mille Sicilia. Their fragrances are like Mediterranean. The founder Stefano told me about amazing story behind it that uh, uh, it belo uh, the brand belonged to the family, but then uh, it stopped a bit the activity and he went on the discovery why so and fell in love with the history and the perfume. So the majority of them smell green, Mediterranean, but there is this specific one that is called... Um, uh, I don't have a sample of it. Where is it? Uh, something with Mandora. It was really almondy, but like green almondy, which was amazing. So I loved that. Uh, and uh, I also really liked uh, the new perfume um, from the brand Elysir that is called, uh, I don't remember, this is a very cool sample. See, I haven't opened um, all of them yet. Um, Elysir Extract Noir, I remember it was really cool and the bottle was cool, but I don't have it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's, it's very... Um, it's not smoky, it's, is it dry wood? I don't know, is it even wood? It's, it's, it's phenomenal, it's something, it's something I would wear, you know, like to a black party, I don't know, it's very like powerful, it will give you a lot of power and confidence. I smell woods in there, I smell not dirt, but like something animalic, but not in a way like mana smells by Nishani. So with that being said, I also love to discover a My Tuxedo by the brand Wermy. Their fragrances are inspired by different fabrics. They have denim, silk, uh, tweed and different stuff. My Tuxedo is the perfume that was created by Maurice uh, uh, Rossell. Apparently he's a great perfumer because I just love this fragrance. There's tobacco, there is cardamom and uh, when I smelled it I was like, oh, wow. But they actually launched a new collection. I smell coffee in there. It's funny, it's not in the notes breakdown. It is called Solaro Collection by Pierre Guerres and it's so colorful and fun. Let me show you how it looks. And a lot of fragrances were, you know, like on this happy rainbow side, which I love because we were missing each other. So everyone wanted happy emotions. 
And this collection is lovely. I was wearing the green one, Benny the blue, my grandma the um, orange, and they are on the fresh side. They are very um, lively. As you know, I prefer more oriental, powdery, sweet fragrances, but uh, this collection will be definitely appealing to those who like more aromatic and green and fresh perfumes. But if you like fragrances in that style, and especially for yours, you might like the new release from Hiram Green that even I enjoyed. Well, I enjoy the majority of his work, and Arcadia is not an exception, although this is my least favorite genre style because the fragrance is for sure, you know, with the lavender and tonka beans, spices. Um, it doesn't smell too masculine though, which is nice and was inspired almost like by this uh, Eden Garden uh, story, you know, paradise. It doesn't smell like paradise to me because my paradise doesn't smell of fougere, but this is not necessarily a very typical masculine barber shoppy type of fragrance, which is a plus for me because I'm not dependent on fragrances do that thing, but um, I know that a lot of people do, so let me know where you are, and while you are commenting, I just wanted to remind you to grab a snack or something, because I know this video is really long, but um, I have a lot to talk about, and not only I just wanted to say, hey, it was great to see all the people and stuff, I actually want to show you which fragrances I got and brought home especially because some of them are, you know, like very unique. For example, like perfumes by this uh, almost like Asian brand from uh, Venice and it is called um, Franco Perfumes. This uh, perfumery is in Venice and the production of their fragrances is amazing because all of them come with a uh, pump sprayers, just look at them. I mean like the glass, everything, it's so, so precious. The red bottle is my favorite because you know I love this color, right? So I'm really excited to explore them a bit um, more and spend some time with these perfumes because they are unique, they are so, so cool. And just in case you love luxurious presentation, this is definitely the brand for you. Their owner is also a very nice man who told me about the story of their friend and it was just very nice, you know, like to hear the stories of people and um, they just inspire you so, so much. So I have a lot of emotions, a lot of, uh, you know, like um, great, great positive um, meetings and one of them was with Christelle Jacquemot with whom we had a live chat on my Instagram. That's the thing that I was talking about, you know, it's one thing when you meet on the internet but then when you see each other in real life it's just like an explosion of emotions and she launched three new perfumes. One of them I have in the mini format that is called um, Enlightenment and it's not necessarily my favorite one but it's very very cute because it smells of uh, a forest, a very dark moody forest, maybe even dangerous with woods, with trees, with very unusual herbaceous notes but she has two other new releases and they are in my top five uh, new fragrance launches. Let me show them really quick. Love the bags that they come in. Very secure, very putty. Slow life. Need to spray a bit on myself. Oh yes, was it this one with sesame and guava leaves and a bit of sandalwood? Creamy, a very green and at the same time pleasant, addictive in the way, like you're eating some um, exotic dessert, but lot, it's, it's not sweet, okay? It's like more fruity and, um, fruity and green. So, so, so good, like a huge favorite of mine. Echoes of Silence is also nice. Mm, I remember that one was complex. Yeah, and I need to take some time, you know, like to spend with it because it's something very special, very, very hard um, to, to be quick on that one because sometimes perfumes are so complex, you really need to appreciate them. But uh, with that being said, you guys, I also wanted to share with you this uh, new collection by the Turkish brand uh, Regalian Istanbul colorful once again and uh, you know very rich and deep sultry to me um this fragrance ala stood out the most why well because you know there are ah, 
some boozy notes and uh, it just smells very good to me personally. Oriental, mm, ambery, beeswaxy, honey-like, for example, fragrance Turkas is on the opposite. It's uh, a little bit marine, it's fresh, it's very easy to understand, more masculine. Uh, the one uh, that's called... Um, I don't remember and I'm not sure it's on the packaging, uh, but like this brown one was good too. I don't even know where to spray them, you know, because it's a bit uh, heavier and spicier, but all of them are really, really cool. So I think I will film a review on them too. And now I just need to check for a second if I missed something or not, because for those of you who watched this video till the end, I have a surprise, but first something very, very fun from Perfume Sucks, a brand from Switzerland that is a lot of fun. I really like Andreas Wilhelm and his work. He's open about all the formulas. You can read them on the bottles. This one is a prototype. It's not finished yet. It's called Pink and uh, it's crazy because there is a note of latex in there and, uh, you know, all, all kind of very weird but at the same time very appealing thing so that's pink by perfume sucks and it smells so intense it's crazy i also wanted to quickly mention us Dusita fragrance that is called montre i loved it a lot it's uh, one of the best releases in my personal opinion although it reminds me of already uh, existing fragrance in her collection that is um, my favorite uh, wood of all time i think i need a bottle of that one it's very expensive wooden finny is gorgeous because it's animalic montre is a bit more floral is a more relaxed version of it and it has a very nice story that you can listen to told by sarah colton in that live stream that i referred to previously but with that being said did i forget something I have this fragrance from the brand Seven's uh, Skincare, and they have some skincare uh, that I got samples of and will definitely update you on. The perfume Fleur, uh, Fleur Blanche, the white flowers, is very easygoing and that's for very pleasant. If you like white flowers, I think you might actually enjoy it. I would wear a fragrance like this if I'm going somewhere and I will be in the nature, you know, because it smells very natural. And I loved that a lot. Also, I was um, very surprised to discover a brand from Uzbekistan at Exxon's because uh, I, I don't have much experience with Uzbek brands. And this one that is called Bajim has a very, you know, like various fragrance collection. Uh, there are perfumes for him and for her. I was told People there prefer, you know, it to be written for him, for her, maybe though they don't get the unisex concept that, which I can imagine. By the way, this Montreux fragrance by Dostitia, she manages to create very chic and exquisite perfumes. But Bajan fragrance is a very bold. For example, today I sprayed my uh, grandma with this red fragrance, uh, uh, Ruby of uh, Timur, for her and the entire uh, house was smelling of this fragrance, even the rooms where she hasn't been in. So yeah, this brand is definitely the one I need to take time and, uh, you know, experience a bit more. And I guess that was all. Probably I missed something. I'm not quite sure. Right, I have some samples of Bastille um, and um, they have like natural cruelty-free fragrances was fun to uh, stand at their booth. You know, there were brands that haven't given me any samples, but I hope I will receive them and then will also share with you how I feel about them. But as I promised, there is like a little surprise for those who watched this super long video till the end. And that is my favorite uh, perfume discovery. I found the one with which I fell in love at first sniff and it was literally the last seconds of the exhibition and this is the brand new release of Pierre Goulion, probably mispronounced his name, I'm very very sorry for that. Also the lightning is changing extremely so I hope that doesn't bother you but you guys. First of all I can't wait to explore his fragrances because there are a lot of them and I had like a blast 
talking to him. He is amazing. His perfumes are amazing. I was really convinced by the quality. But, you know, this Dialogue with Venus deserves a separate review. It is phenomenal. It is gorgeous. This is the one that I fell in love with at the exhibition. It was my first time smelling his perfumes, meeting him, and um, it was like a huge, 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 huge um, blast for me. So anyway, it was amazing to be at Exons, to see the people. I hope that the next year I will be more productive, I will film more interviews, but this time it was busy, it was crowded, uh, it was even a bit um, annoying, definitely challenging, you know, to chat with the brand owners because they were very busy, especially, you know, with the distributors and stuff, I hope. That's due to the long break and uh, the next year is going to be a bit better. Let me know if you have any questions left and I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching this video probably while doing something at your home or even watching. Thank you so much for your time. If you appreciate this video, please give it a huge thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already because that would be really helpful because, you know, the brands, they really check uh, how many subscribers you have and stuff like that. And if you would like my channel to grow, I would really appreciate your support. You can donate on Buy Me Coffee website. The link is below. Use my discounts, shopping perfumes. All of that really helps. And follow me on my social media, such as Instagram, to stay in touch. And I'm looking forward to your feedback. Which of the mentioned fragrances stood out the most to you? Maybe you are excited about something. And uh, just in general, your... Uh, feedback is something that uh, helps my videos to get out there and I would love that. So thank you so much once again and make sure to stay tuned, smell good. We'll see each other next one really soon. Bye guys!